my name's Jeanette Lance Bergen and this is Car Crazy Cheshire. In this week's show, if you love expensive cars, you'll love our visit to the most famous car company in the world, Rolls-Royce and Bentley at Cruz. Plus, we go a wandering in the fields at the annual Cheshire Show at Tabley. Hello and welcome to Rolls-Royce and Bentley here in Crewe. For nearly a hundred years, Rolls-Royce has been synonymous with the ultimate in luxury cars. Since 1904, when Sir Henry Royce's first car left the factory, the traditions of excellence and hand-built quality have been strictly adhered to. Now, Rolls-Royce build the best cars in the world, and we're lucky enough to be here today to see just how they do it. So come on, let's go. Well, I'm joined here by Richard Charlesworth. Richard, whereabouts are we here? Well, you're in the factory at Crewe, as you know, and this particular room we're in here is what we call our lineage centre, where we seek to display the, the history of Rolls-Royce and Bentley throughout um, the 95 years or so we've been mm. going, but also an indication of where we're going in the future as well. So we, we talk about lineage, i.e. there's a future there, rather than just heritage, which so often can be just history. So. so do a lot of people who come here to buy their cars like to have a look round here? They do, and we like to bring people here, because mm. of course when you're buying a Rolls-Royce or a Bentley, you're not just buying into a buying a motor car, you're buying into our history as well, because everything that we do with the two marks uh, relies very much upon our historical connection and uh, we like to bring people here to, to help them become part of it, because then mm. they can all be dinner party bores, you see, and talk about Rolls Royce and Bentley over the day. <laughs> they know so. the ins and outs of their well, car. You need, to. you need to. If you're going to buy one of our motor cars, it's more than just a car, so you need, right. you need to have a feeling for it. So what's the future of Rolls-Royce looking like? It's looking good. I mean, as you know, last year we were bought by Volkswagen. Um, which means that we have an automotive company who owns us, who understands our business and mm -hmm. who has deep pockets to help us invest for the future. So here at Crew, things are looking good. As you know, in a few years time, potentially Rolls-Royce will move away. But in the longer term, um, we've got a lot of things to do with Bentley. We're going to see our production go from around 2,000 cars a year to more than 9,000. So the most important thing is that Crew is safe and employment is safe. So in 1905, how much would I have paid for this car? Oh, now there's a question. I, I think it was about 900 and odd pounds, around about 1,000 pounds, which of Steel. course was a lot of money then. It's <laughs> yeah, worth actually, a little bit more now, you'd be pleased to know. 900 but. pounds is a lot of money now, <laughs> never mind oh, then. That's right, that's right. <laughs> Insured for around 300,000 pounds. And because this, this, like one or two of our other historic cars, is irreplaceable, it's not as though it's like a modern car where if you, if you you know, total it, you can go and buy a new one. With this, you can't do that. So yeah. it's really just a, a level at which we could properly restore it if it, if it were damaged, yeah. which hopefully it won't be. The Silver Ghost, which is the, probably the most valuable car in the world and, and probably the best known historic Rolls Royce, the car that actually made the name for the company, would normally be standing next to me here, but right. that's out and about working. The cars are driven regularly around the world, uh, travel a lot, they probably do more air miles than most of us, but uh, <laughs> uh, they travel around the world as ambassadors for the company, both right. Rolls-Royce and Bentley. And I love there was a quote where it said that um, Rolls-Royce never break down, they just fail to proceed. Well, very rare occurrence of course, <laughs> but you're absolutely right, yes. We never admit <laughs> to lovely. never failing to proceed at all. But. So um, have you got any other cars or other designs in mind for the future? Well, I think while you're here in the lineage area, we've got to show you some other motor cars. But I guess if this is where our history started, particularly for Rolls-Royce, mm. where the future could lie, especially for Bentley, which longer term is going to be the future for Crew, well, then we have a concept vehicle just a few yards away that we showed at Geneva called the Uno Air, which is probably a very dramatic or the most dramatic glimpse you could have into the future. So, Richard, is this the future of Rolls-Royce? Well, probably not exactly this. This, this uh, The Bentley Uno Air is a concept car, which we showed at Geneva this year really as part of an effort to help increase the awareness and understanding of the Bentley mark. Mm -hmm. Seven out of ten of the cars that we make and sell are Bentleys and have been for a decade, but Bentley is less well known than Rolls-Royce mm. and so we want to increase the awareness. Now, although this car will probably not be built, this is an indication of the sort of things that Bentley could do, because Bentley with his sporting heritage going back to Le Mans in the 1920s, um, could well go into this sort of arena if you like, the sort of the Bentley supercar. But what was more important about this was the the 16-cylinder, 8-litre engine that's in the back of it, or in mm. the middle of it, I should say, to give it its correct configuration, <laughs> that most certainly, or most probably, will be part of our future 
uh, in terms of new Bentley models right. we'll bring out in the next five years or so. So you couldn't put a price on this car because it's a concept car? It's a concept car. As I say, it's unlikely to be built, very unlikely to be built, but a clear indication of the sort of future that Bentley has because mm. at the end of the day we will be Bentley only in a few right. years' time. So we're going to be uh, exploring fully the breadth of the scope that the Bentley Mark gives us. And so this is one possible direction. Is there only one of these cars built then? That's it. That's, that's the it then. Only. That's the only concept car, yes. And it's not a runner. The engine starts and it can move slowly, but you couldn't drive it. It was now time for the Grand Tour. First up was the Mulliner Park War Division. This is where if you want something special added to your car, they'll do their utmost to accommodate you. Mulliner Park Ward is the, if you like, the coach building or special side of the business of the Rolls Royce business which offers the service and the opportunities for customers that want to build an expertly tailored motor car. Right. So I can call you Q then, can I? You certainly can. So it's sort of got that sort of James Bond feel about it. And you look the part as well, I might say, <laughs> Trevor. <you> very much. <laughs> no, but it has, it's got a sort of like an air of secrecy in here. It does, and I, I suppose it's because it's not every client that is has the time or is able to, to walk in the front doors here and bespoke expertly yeah. tailor their own motor cars. What um Sort of going on the James Bond theme there, you must have, do you have any sort of like, do you do special specifications for like bulletproof windows and armoured cars? Yes, we can, we offer the service of doing that. We can tailor make them to uh, different levels of armour plated, different levels of uh, protection against. And, and, and so what would that involve? Um, basically, we'd be understanding what it is that the customer is trying to protect themselves from and then analysing that and understanding what type of protection is, is best suited. So could you could, could could I tell the difference between say this car and then one that's had like bulletproof windows and generally speaking at the lower levels so it's up to what I would call relatively small handgun level you wouldn't be able to tell the difference right not not, not as the general person so you haven't got any sort of secret gadgets that come out the wheels you know like knives that spin along not quite that we've done things similar but not quite what's the sort of weirdest um, <laughs> specification you've been asked for i think probably some of the weirdest ones are to uh, some of the probably far east countries where we might have done things like grenade launchers and <laughs> machine gun ports and that type of thing we need none of that over <laughs> here thank you very much <laughs> Uh, it, it's more more toys rather than yeah. putting them into real action. But what about the ladies? What sort of specific? I mean, um, are they really particular about what sort of things are they asked for? I think for? ladies probably control a lot of the colours. Certainly, <laughs> colours of the exterior of the motor cars, the types of finishings on the inside of the motor car, and as we got with this particular one, probably a lot of the features in this have been tailored to an individual lady. Right, like what you were showing me earlier. Is there like a little vanity box? That's right. And uh, and it's got like a what well, it's got a secret compartment. Is that for all the lipstick and the makeup? And then whatever she desires to play. Oh, with. I wish I had Posh Spice's <laughs> money, and then I could do all that, couldn't I? <laughs> so cute. I just wanted to say, just to finish things off. I know I've seen the car I want, the the silver Rolls Royce over there. Yeah. But um, I've got a rabbit, Florence. Could you make me like a portable uh, rabbit hutch in the back, all in nice oak? I'm sure we can design something that would fit neatly between the two rear seats. Mm, lovely. And we can uh, house it in there. Great. And Me and Florence will be very happy. Thanks. Yeah. Rolls-Royce and Bentley are for the majority hand-built cars. We took a sneaky peek at what goes on in the wood shop. Well, in the wood shop, we still use traditional methods. We still use uh, the log of veneer, which we actually select. And we actually still joint the veneer, showing an, a mirror image. These four sheets I've got here go to make a Rolls-Royce fascia. From the stage of jointing this veneer, then it is placed onto the substrate, as you can see here, where the veneer covers all the way round and actually goes into the apertures. From this point here, then it is rebated all the way round. Then we have to apply the boxwood and the cross banding. Mm. This is all done by hand, and this is actually Australian cross banding which is straight grain walnut. We place the boxwood around with masking tape to hold it into shape, and then we apply cross banding. We do this all the way around the substrate, then this again is stuck down, and the finished item comes out like this when it's polished, each matching with the joint still there on this and the airbag and the end panel. Here's one we made earlier. All panels have chassis numbers, which correspond to a customer's car. 
It takes 85 people in the wood shop all day to produce just eight full finished wood and veneered interiors for the Rolls Royce or Bentley in question. And believe me, when you see how much detail goes into making just one face here, you can see that time is precious. So Nigel, this process is all completely handmade? Yes, over, over, over many years now the process has not changed or it has changed very little. Basically everything is still done by hand. We have a few new machines that actually help us to prepare the veneer, which cuts a lot of time down. But everything else, the jointing and everything like that, is still done by hand. Rolls-Royce has a real happy family atmosphere. The employees seem as proud of their products as the people who own them. Out in the main assembly hall, I met a likeable character called Slim. Slim, I know you're the team leader. What? Tell me a little bit about your job. Well, it involves the day-to-day -day running and uh, the inspection of the hide, making sure we're cutting the right hides for the, for the right car. Because every hide that we cut is individual to one particular vehicle. Uh, we don't just cut a batch of leather. It, it's special for that one car. It takes average of 15 hides a car. Right. And we, we sort each set of hide for that vehicle. Because that's specified by a customer when they visit the factory, uh, they choose the colour of the, the leather for the seats, the so colour of the carpet. You could help me if I came in here and said I wanted pink leather interior. If that was your favourite colour dress, we could dye the leather to match that, we could make the leather. I could take you around the factory, I have another position as a tour guide, take customers around the factory, we start in the body assembly, go into the wood shop, you could choose your wood, you could bring your own wood to the factory and we'd produce a car, you could bring your own material and we would put it out here. I love the place. It's nice to work with top class quality stuff. I've noticed that. It's like a sort of family here, isn't very it? Much, very it much. Everyone's really proud of their job and proud of who they work for. Yeah, we do regard it as a, a family thing. You know, you're becoming part of the family built for me by people who know me and I know. So we know the customers, we know the people, they know us. People remember your name, they remember me. They re oh, yes, we met you the last time, and they'll tell their friends. and. That, oh, I had this particular guide, or so you'll get somebody that maybe you, you know, maybe you sold a Rolls Royce to somebody in New York, and they'll actually ring up and say, "I want to speak to yeah. Slim." Well, they can dial, dial direct, and I have experienced people ringing me up personally and saying, you know, and thanking you for your visit and saying the car's great. I've got my car now; it's fantastic. Things like that. Come we over to the ranch in New York, oh, and we'll yeah. look after I'm you. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. <laughs> yeah, I'm waiting. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, come over to Florida and spend a week in my. Yeah, yeah. Well. Have you got any tales that you can tell us? Any weird or wonderful stories that people have asked for? Any specifications? I had a German customer who came with a piece of blue paper one day, said it was his favourite colour blue and could we match the leather? The lady with the sequin off her dress. <gasps> favourite blue sequin. She said that, uh, could you dye it? We match the leather. We now have sequin blue paint. Well, here it is. My very own luxury Rolls Royce. Now we've shown you briefly what goes into making one of these and I'm sure you'll agree that although they are expensive, they're worth every penny. In fact, I've just got to have one. I'm going to see the bank manager later about remortgaging the house, selling some shares and cashing in on my life insurance. Just hope a fella doesn't find out. See ya. After the break, we're at the Cheshire Show. Oh yeah, yes! I'll get some top money for this. Oh are yeah, look at this gear. Oh, I'd be a piece of piss, this. Bleeding hell! Mate, who are you from? You're not from Crime Watch, are you? Thank God for that. Hey, listen. Turn it off, right? Just do us a favour, just turn it off, yeah? Is it off? Right, I'll tell you what, I've got some nice gear for you. It's definitely off, innit, yeah? Come and have a look at this. It's, it's Cheshire, innit? It's dead easy around here. I'll tell you what, it's so easy to blag gear around there. You won't believe it, it's dead easy. What do you want, mate? How about a trainers? What size are you? About a 10? Listen, mate, top of the age trainers, 20 notes. How about that? Listen, I'll tell you what, do you, do you like CDs? I bought some CDs. I bought an ABBA, boy zone. I tell you what, I bought a nice bit of fat boy slim. I tell you what, it's dead easy, man, it's dead easy. Do you know what? I could even get you a virgin train to run on time. That's how good I am, you know what I mean? That's how good I am. Listen, I bought a car stereo. Yeah, I bought a car stereo. I tell you what, forget the car stereo. I bought a car, a nice beamer, and it'll dibble. No. Now, if you've got one of these, you've probably got a couple of acres. 
And if you've got a couple of acres, then you should be down here. And I'm not talking about the local clinic, I'm talking about the Cheshire Show. So come on, let's go and see what it's all about. This event at Tabley is the showcase of country life in Cheshire. It's a place to bring the whole family, including the dog. Whilst the central parade ground offered many eye-catching sights, anything from hounds to huntsmen, brass bands to even geese, we went in search of the weird and wonderful. sitting in? Is it a car? Is it a military vehicle? What is it? This is an all-terrain vehicle, basically because it will travel on just about all terrain. Not ideal on roads, but uh, anything else. It will travel across fields, uh, mossy patches, peat bogs, uh, through water. All right. What sort of people would buy this? Uh, the sort of people are people who have fields, farmers who have fields to cover uh, in a short time, need to carry a load as well. Uh, people who shoot, uh, go out, need the uh, the capacity to carry a number of people and the guns and um, obviously for entertainment. Right. Does, does this go on water then? Yes, it travels on water. It will do three and a half miles an hour, four miles an hour on water. Uh, on the road or on the field will do 30 miles an hour. Oh, quite good. How would you steer this then on the water? Same as you do on the road. There's two levers, one for turning left and one for turning right. It's like a pedalo, isn't it? In Spain, it's you'd very get similar, <laughs> very similar, but your legs don't Here get we tired. Go. <laughs> right. So <clears throat> this is this is what did you say? This that's was the just... left brake that yep. stops the left hand we uh, wheels from turning. This is the right one stops the right hand wheels from turning, and that is uh, the principle of skid steer. It turns by braking one side while you continue to drive the other side. Right. Would you get a lot of interest at the Cheshire Show with one of these? Uh, we've had a lot of interest already and we've only been open two hours. We've had a lot of people just playing and looking at it, but I think that the chances are that people will look at it very seriously. Yeah, it's a real eye-catcher though, isn't it? It's an eye-catcher, but it's a hard worker as well. <laughs> just like us. That's the way. <laughs> it's got eight wheels. Um, is that, I mean, that's expensive, isn't it? How, how often do you have to change the wheels? Uh, it's rare that you change wheels. Uh, if you damage them, yes, you would need to change them, but they are a very high quality tyre. Right. You can drive over rocks with them or anything else. Yeah. Mm. What sort of price am I looking at then if I want to buy one of these? They start at 7,500 for the six wheel version and go up to 11,500 for the eight wheel diesel engine version. Right, so this is 11,500. This is the petrol engine version at 10,500. Right. A bit expensive, really, for my quarter of an acre garden. <laughs> You'd need a little bit more space than that. I would really, but I'm working on it at the moment. Bob, just finally, um, have you seen any of the banana splits knocking around? Because I've heard they've lost one of their vehicles. I haven't. I've heard of them, <laughs> but they were long before my time. Feature. You can get almost anything at the Cheshire Show, from wellies to walking sticks, tractors to cars, so I decided to do a bit of retail therapy. That's shopping to you and me. suits me. A girl can never have enough hats. I wonder what Scylla would think. Handbags, my favourite. Ooh, looks like they're designer. Not. After all that shopping, I somehow managed to find myself locked in the back of a strange van. Well, we're looking at a few quirky things today, and no, it's not a UFO, it's a Razorback. That's correct. Martin, tell me a little bit about it. Uh, well, the Razorback originally comes from Australia. Oh. Um, it started off there and started off life in Australia. Well, basically, the floor raises and lowers, so it's so easy to load heavy objects. Over there, it was designed in health and safety in mind. People carrying so many heavy objects in and out of vans nowadays people can't afford to be lifting heavy weights. So the ideal is to just draw it in, raise it up, drive away. Right. So is there any sort of other competition? I've never seen anything like this before. Nope, this is the only one. It's been out six months and uh, there's nobody else that makes it. It's part a joint venture between Razorback and Volkswagen. Have you had a lot of interest down at the show? We've had a hell of a lot of interest. It's, uh, it's, it's good. 
it's doing very very well and we're selling it to different people metropolitan councils and all sorts police everybody right how much does one of these cost it costs twenty two thousand pounds on the road but mm. uh, when you think of the amount of time and effort and saving overall it's ideal Martin, this would be great for transporting motorbikes. I know when my brother, he's got um, a Ducati, and when he has to transport it, he has problems. He has to get a, a wooden plank and all that. So is that one of the purposes? That's one of the real purposes. Uh, ideal, two motorbikes in, raise the floor, drive away. And what else? What other things um, does it get used it's, for? It's used for, for carrying heavy things. Vending companies, they like it. Bring the machine, coin machine on. Drop it down. What about livestock? Can you transport livestock? Uh, I've not seen anybody transport livestock, but there's always a first. I'm sure somebody down here will want it for that. Well, thank you very much for joining us. All right, thanks very much. <laughs> there was a lot of unusual transport around, none more so than my scooter, which I almost came a cropper on. But one firm favourite of the Cheshire show is the Land Rover. <laughs> Gary, your stand must be definitely the busiest one here, because from what I can see, everyone in Cheshire drives a Range Rover. <laughs> We'd like to think so, obviously, we want to sell a few more, and that's obviously the reason why we're here. Um, do you come here every year? Yeah, there's a daily So, trip. do you get anyone coming that actually puts down the readies and says, I'll have two of those? Well, we're always open to offer, but obviously it's more of a sort of PR thing than, uh, than taking orders, to be fair. Would you say that the Range Rover's sort of like the poser's car? Well, I mean, it's horses for courses. A lot of people use it as a working vehicle, but obviously, yes, it is a nice car to, to drive around in also. A little birdie told me that that's the car that the Cheshire set drives. Well, we're actually in Chester on uh, Cheshire. So All right, so you can't tell me who the Cheshire set are then? We wouldn't mind. Either. All right then. <laughs> what about this car here? What am I standing in front of here? Well, this is a high capacity uh, Defender 110. Which is obviously more of a working vehicle than, a, than an opposing vehicle. So this is more like what, uh, what the farmer would buy? Yeah, that's right. And then describe the, um, the Range Rover customer. Well, I mean, it's all sorts. It's horses for courses. I mean, we get people obviously using the, the Range Rover as a working vehicle. We get people that, that never even see a field that use them as sort of limousines. It's the horsey set, though, that have the, the Range Rover, isn't it? Well, as I said, I mean, it's people from all walks of life. Yeah, I like them. Nice car. What's your best selling car? It's probably at the moment the Freelander. Um, obviously, that is a car that is very good on the road. It's also a very good off road vehicle. Uh, it's introduced us into a new market and it, it's very popular for all walks of life. So do you like a, a four-wheel drive car? Would you always have one of those? Well, I can afford one, yeah. <laughs> they drink a lot of juice though, don't they? Well, I mean the Freelander, uh, the petrol version, you're talking around about 30 miles a gallon, diesel 40 miles to the gallon. It's on a par with most of these sort of executive saloons. Right. All right then, well I won't stop your work because I'm sure there's plenty of people down here ready to um, splash the cash. Right. So I'll see you later. Okay. Thanks, Thanks Gary. Lot. Well, the Cheshire show's finished and I can't be bothered queuing with the rest of them. So I've bought myself here this lovely horse. Come on, Red Rum, we're in the uh, 3.30 at Chester. I think I bought myself a nag. In next week's show, we fulfil every man's dream when we drive the new Ferrari 360 Modena.